So hi everybody, welcome back to A Chat With. Yorkshire's full of areas like that and they are undiscovered mostly. So hi everybody, welcome back to A Chat With. I am here today with Johnny. So Johnny, welcome. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Um, I really appreciate it, Laura. No, no problem. Do you want to tell everybody who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I help ethics first individuals and organisations driven by purpose and positive impact to competently and effectively brand and market themselves. Um, and I also help leaders to develop different ways of thinking, to engage with both macro and micro level perspectives, to create so uh, solutions for very complex problems. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of the international branding and marketing firm Mantra Media and the co-founder of the Japanese luxury retail brand Atelier Japan. Um, I'm also currently an, an ambassador for the Investors in Community, a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts and Commerce, uh, a guest chair for the Intelligence Forums and currently the USA chair and a member of the Deloitte's Climate Action Coalition. I think that's nearly everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've got to have a list and reel them off as you go, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all up here. It's all <laughs> that's what matters. So we're here today to talk about kind of community. You, um, since I've known you, we've always talked about the impact that you can have on society and on other people. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit more about how that has kind of come into your world and what you're doing in that space? So, so many years ago, I, I, so I've been in marketing for over 20 years now, and, and I felt that the marketing sector was predicated on uh, just just the worst kind of ways of looking at the world you know very kind of um, it, just very predatory uh, in how it promoted products that were unhealthy or or just bad for people um, mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna make arsenic baby food really um, <laughs> and, and uh, you know I, I just I kind of got sick of um, very intelligent people uh, choosing um, profit over over other human beings. And um, marketing is very clever in it. And there's things like nudge theory and, and, and the psychological mix in there, and um, semiotics and all the rest of it to get people to think about things in different ways. And I thought, well, all these powerful skills, can't we use them to make society better? And and uh, at the time, I was uh, it was like I was you know uh, coming down from the mountain and telling everybody that you know water is wine and um, the sky is orange, um, and I said no 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 ethics it's a thing, um, you'll you'll sleep at night, um, and um, I, I I think that's kind of where it all started. So when I formed Mantra uh, after doing consultative work for lots of different agencies. Um, I said, you know, ethics and values have to drive everything that we do. Yeah. Uh, everything we do is ha has to be authentic, and we will only work with organisations where they they are helping create a positive impact in the world and leaving the world a little bit better than before they were here. So, yeah. so that's kind of where it all started, and from that, it, it kind of. Um, it grew very quickly internationally. So I'll, I'll give you a few examples. Um, one of the, the first national campaigns we did was for the UK government, and it was to diversify mentorship in British schools. Because a few years ago, um, the only people who would uh, volunteer to mentor in schools were white, middle class, middle aged women. Um, mm -hmm. And the problem is that these isn't representative of, of of kids in schools anymore um and so we we created uh, a national campaign that was incredibly successful uh, 1.1 million views on twitter in the first 24 hours over a thousand uh mentors signed up within the first day uh, and it was incredibly successful um mm -hmm. We then, in 2018, we did a global campaign over the Five Eyes Nations uh, to raise awareness for post-traumatic stress. 
Mm. So we traveled four and a half thousand kilometers across the outlook of, of Australia with the military. Um, and, and this was all around events around the Invictus Games. And uh, uh, we were traveling with the Invictus athletes. And again, it was all about how do we make the world a better place? So that's kind of that's kind of our our DNA now is in 2020, we did a, a national campaign for Together Women where we created a, a graphic novel that we released episodically through all types of social media. Charity came back to us, they said they'd been inundated mm. with, um, because what we were doing was we were targeting young women from certain communities that face very specific challenges in those communities. And the idea is we're going to get you to better outcomes. And... Um, and the charity was just they were over the moon because it was it was the first successful campaign I think they'd ever had. Um, but it actually got lots of young women to to say, look, I need help. Yeah. What do we do? How, how can you help me? And, yeah. and that's that's kind of our, as I say, it's our DNA. Yeah, I think in, it massively resonates, as you know, with me um, coming from an an agency background where actually it was just a cash cow um taking money to gain money for, for money's sake not actually about helping people um and helping people understand their own impact and i mean for me that's what marketing is especially for small businesses it's a really useful way of understanding the impact you can have on other people um and i don't know if you agree with that i i, I do i do and and i think it's it's that um it's it's appreciating people uh and it's being more humanistic in your approach um and uh understanding that that it is harder it is definitely harder being purpose driven mm -hmm. because and and some people don't like that you know we're, we're a very successful company and and now part of a group of companies that are very successful and the 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 thing is we're doing things in the right way for the right reasons and being successful alongside that. And a lot of people don't understand that because they've had to live their, their whole lives doing stuff against their values and beliefs. And I just refuse to do that. I mean, since the music industry, you know, the, um, I was talking to somebody about integrity the other day who's created a solution for, for the care sector. I mean, a macro solution for the care sector. Yeah. Very excited. And, you know, he suggested that I, I join the, the board. And um, that was that was pretty amazing because it, yeah. it, it was purely integrity because he knew that every decision that I would make would be for the benefit of others, not for yeah. myself. Yeah. And that's not me being a martyr. That's me just yeah. going, well, actually, I'm I'm fine as I am. Let's actually yeah. make the world a better place, and yeah. and I think people don't. Re I love that Maya Angelou uh, Angelou uh, quote. You know, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, uh, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve the beauty. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know, these journeys are hard, but they're worth it. Yeah, for sure. I think it's interesting as well, the yeah. act that maybe your own travel and your own involvement with communities across the world has had on your outlook on the community right here and the projects you're taking right here. Um, so you mentioned you mentioned Japan, you mentioned America, you've, there's a lot of different cultures there. And I think from mm. those cultures and the way those people uh, live their lives, that can feed a lot back into our own, um, for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, the way we operate as a business um, globally is, is influenced by all the countries in which we operate. Um, Japan has probably been the biggest influence on how we operate. Uh, mm -hmm. We use a model of Ikigai and uh, hence our, our building in Sheffield is called Ikigai House. And um, it's one of the first companies that we, we worked with in Kyoto. It was called Sunny White. Um, what are Sunny White? Sunny White are a company that create affordable housing for single mothers in Kyoto. Okay. And um, again, just beautiful. Thing. And we, we're, we're essentially on retainer with the Japanese government. We do all kinds of things for independent mm. makers around the world. But it's, um, I think you attract what you are based on the ethics that you carry. 
I think it was a lot of people say there are just one way of, of being in the world, right? You, you know, you operate like this or operate like that. And um, you have to forgive me for, for quoting people I'm interested in, but Descartes, you know, Descartes famously said, you know, um, uh, what was it? If you would be a, a if uh, if you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt um, as much as possible all things. Mm -hmm. and it's thinking about things differently. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think unfortunately, in, particularly in our sector, as you know, there's this nihilistic approach to, to really hard capitalism. Mm -hmm. which is you know it's all about me it's all about da -da. and i cannot stand that nihilism yeah. it's it's wrong and mm -hmm. and uh nietzsche came up with some really really bad stuff <laughs> obviously <Yeah. laughs> uh, influenced some really bad people too um yeah. so so I, I do think there is a different way of doing things but you have to be open to questioning the the norm and and, and what people tell you what impact do you think, um, from a marketing perspective, let's talk marketing, community can have on your own brand? So, and what I mean by that is founding yourself within understanding the impact that you have on other people and on society. What impact do you think that can or does have on companies that take that approach? So, we've been waxing lyrical about ethics first for about seven years now <laughs> yeah <laughs> um the market is catching up um, um i mean we've 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 seen people who have literally copy and pasted uh things that i've said from interviews and with the bbc and things like that and mm -hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> even quite well-known marketeers that will shall not be named uh, no. <laughs> have, have lifted things that that we do and say and ways of operating and that's fine that's fine as long as they do the stuff underneath it and yeah, this is that's the challenging thing about our industry is there are a lot of people say the right things but they don't do the right things and that's yeah. and that's that's the bit that's but I do believe that the market is getting more sensitive to authenticity and people who are just genuine. Um, uh, authenticity is is uh, is really disruptive for some people mm -hmm. because they've never been they've never given themselves or they've never had the opportunity to be beautifully authentic. And then somebody is authentic and be a bit jarring. Oh, go on. You're speaking yeah. naturally and, and just yeah. whatever is within you. Um, that's strange. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think there are some challenges because we are definitely affecting the marketing community because it's it's like Bill, H Bill Hicks, you know, the famous comedian, mm -hmm. beautiful human being. He, he you know, would say... Uh, <laughs> he'd say lots of... He hated marketeers. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is you know, um, because they would commodify anything uh, yeah. if they could make a, a quick book. And um, some people, some particularly well-known people are now using the ethics model of business mm -hmm. that they started in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. And they've used that to go, oh, ethics, just care about each other, ethics. But there's no depth to the conversation. Uh -oh. They say yeah. the words, but they say the words like a really well-trained parrot. They don't know what any of them mean, but no. they can repeat them with eloquence and, and power mm -hmm. and vi uh, vigor. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think we are affecting the industry, but it's going to take time for it to change because, oh, yeah. it, yeah. you know, it's one of those. Unfortunately, um, there are, it's buzzword, isn't it? It's, it's, there are people who take the words for taking the words sake and they don't like you say they don't use it authentically they don't actually change their organizational structure and culture to fit their morals values and ethics um and that's i mean that is a massive issue within the sustainability industry within ethics 
because it's the whole greenwashing argument. It's a very similar conversation of it's not there to be used as a marketing tool. And that's the confusion is that it's it's more of an added bonus. If a company is ethically sound and has morals that they stick to, it's more you can agree with those and you can work with somebody because of the fact that they are also your values. It shouldn't necessarily be something you use to sell your business and sell your products and services. I, I completely agree. It shouldn't be commodified. It should just be authentic. And exactly. I mean, the, you see this a lot in NLP practitioners in politics. Uh, there's a group of people there and they're going to say they're going to say the message that they know is going to get them the outcome they want from that group and then they go mm -hmm. over there and they say completely the juxtaposed <laughs> they do it in a way, a way in a sequence that gets them the outcome they need and and that's a demonstration of of, of people who have no there's no core there's no values there um mm -hmm. and and i think that's and i think that's a i think if people are looking to work with marketing firms that match their values all they need to do is go and listen to the track record you know what has that company been saying for six seven eight ten twenty years mm. if they've been saying it's all about ethics it's all about values don't do things that hurt people don't do things mm -hmm. that hurt people in other lands just yeah. be good <laughs> yeah just be a good human <laughs> it's, it's not hard no. just better decisions yeah um and um and and i think that's the, the the wonderful thing about mantra media is that you know you, i mean you, you you would have seen we get written about daily by our customers and the i mean yesterday it was a day before yesterday i think i wrote something on linkedin one of our customers said that we'd put him on a journey that felt safe yeah i saw so, that uh, you know to to be his authentic self yeah and and when jonathan you know it was a surprise call as well he just called yeah. me up. um and he told me that you know that building his website building his brand you know all this kind of stuff that we'd done was mm. what well, actually gave him something that was beautifully authentic that can scale so they can have a successful business mm. without giving up their values and yeah and um to enable people to do that i mean that's the dream exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and i think that says it all really when i kind of said before about what impact it can have on your business if you actually do channel your ethics and morals it's brand loyalty at the end of the day you've had that really good feedback from one of your customers who clearly isn't going to go anywhere else who clearly is going to vouch for you to his pals and his colleagues so actually what you've, you've done by sticking to your morals and your ethical ground is actually nurture a really loyal customer. I, I do. I mean, we, um, I mean, obviously we, have, uh, we, we do events and, and we have a, a, not just a digital newsletter and, and various podcast series like yourself, but we we also have a, a physical newsletter. I, I think because of these things that all come together, we, we're actually, we've not intended to be, but we've also got a bit of a media brand. Um, mm -hmm. And people like to be in the ecosystem. And it, mm -hmm. It's such a, I mean, it really it connects with me when people yeah. say, I just want to be in that ecosystem because I know what yeah. you guys are about and that's what I'm about. Yeah. And um, it's it to hear the way that people speak about the people I employ and the way that they are mm -hmm. uh, is is a joy, um, yeah. a, a beauty and a joy. And it, 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 it puts things to, into perspective. Um, I'm a huge William Blake fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I love... Uh, the works of William, but he's my favourite poet. Well, I say that I love, <laughs> I love Byron as well. Um, but but I, I hop between the two depending on how mischievous I'm feeling. And yeah. um, there's a there's a there's a quote from um, from for, uh, by by William Blake that I absolutely love, which is about perspective, mm -hmm. uh, which I always um, talk about in in how we look at things because it's it's how you look at things in the moment. Uh, that helps you make better decisions. And he, um, to quote, it's uh, to see 
a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. I, I just, you know, it's, it's this frame of reference. What are you looking at? And for that, that comes back to the Japanese culture because the way they operate businesses is, okay, so my great, 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 great granddaughter is going to be running this business in 300 years. So mm. we need to now plan. Ex That's how they think. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so they're, not, <laughs> it, it, they're not thinking about just making no. a quick, you know, a uh, quick amount of money. It's, mm. it's, it's long term. I mean, I remember uh, uh, five years ago, I went to meet with a matcha company in, in Kyoto and um, a be beautiful organization. And there was this there was this picture on the wall of um, the founder with mm -hmm. his uh, 50 generations after grandson. Wow, okay. <laughs> and we had a picture together in, in their studio. And, oh. um, and, and it was just amazing to see all that heritage and history. I mean, one of the bands, brands that we were with, Comoria. So Comoria, they, they, they actually invented types of fans, mm -hmm. hand fans. Uh, they've been around for a thousand years. It's a mm. business that's been around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, isn't it? <laughs> so you just think, okay, that's yeah. special. I mean, one thing, they they said um, no to working with, uh, I've got to be careful what I say here. Let's say one of the most successful uh, companies in the world that make cartoons and, and uh, films and things said no to them. They said yes to us. Um, and again, it was because they felt that that very large entity uh, was just wanting to reap profits and there'd be no value or authenticity of engaging with that brand, regardless of how many noughts they were going to put in front of them. But working mm. with us was like a, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And Yeah. So I guess, I mean, it's not just about having – the community around you but it's also what legacy that can create for you i mean that speaks a million words the fact that they've been going for so long and they've built it on their principles and i think that's that i guess that's what we can take from this is by understanding and kind of living your ethics and your your morals you're not just creating a community and an ecosystem around you and your brand but you're also creating a legacy and that is the ultimate impact that you can have as a business isn't it 100 percent yeah amazing okay. so if you were to give a business owner uh one piece of advice based on what we've talked about what would it be um if it was somebody before they start oh actually any any point on their journey mm -hmm. i would say introspection is key before you do anything yeah um i i did a lot of uh introspection before i formed mm. mantra media uh what do i want to create why do i want to create it mm -hmm. uh, what impact does it have for me what do i want what impact does it have on the world what is useful mm. um so i would say that before anybody does anything in a business or even continues their business if they're if they're not sure if they want to continue it they need to go inward and find mm. out actually what, the, if someone doesn't know what their values are, they need to find that out. They need to find yeah. out what their values are. Because if you don't follow your values, you won't get to fulfillment. You'll mm. just get to um, um, uh, moving from one thing to another that gives you little bits of happiness on your journey, but not genuine fulfillment at your core. No. Uh, so, so that's, yeah, intro introspection and knowing you and your why yeah. is, is everything. And then not deviating from it. Yeah, that's the main thing. I mean, some people out there will just say, work longer, work longer, work harder. Work. That's not healthy. It's no. not about that. You, you no. can live your values without, you know, killing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
and there's a there's there's a certain uh, marketing charlatan that's very well known who used to wax lyrical about the only reason that you would not where I am is because you don't work as hard as I do. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what he said for years until he started to spout the ethics stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Weird how he made that change because he knew what yeah. what was what was doing well in the market, and. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just I, I disagree with that. I think opportunities present themselves when you're open to them, and when you're and when you're searching, and you can only do that when you're happy, and yeah. or, or you you're driven, you you've got a passion, you've got fire in your belly. But you're only going to feel those things if you're doing things that work for you, doing things that are part of your core. Yeah. I completely, completely agree. So to wrap this up then, if people want to find out more about you and more about Mantra as well, where do they go? What's the best place to find you? So there's the, the website, uh, mantrahq.com. Um, happy for people to uh, send me personal emails as well. I try to get back to everybody. So uh, johnny at mantrahq.com. Um, I'm... I'm I try to connect with everybody on LinkedIn. I have a very busy LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> I've been, I, I started on LinkedIn many, many years ago. I was training uh, um, recruitment companies in London how to use LinkedIn back in 2010. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so um, as long as there's an individual message that says, this is why I want to connect with you, uh, then it's fine. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that, they're usually the place I'll be. I don't have uh, personal social media uh, yeah. because um, I, I just don't think it's useful. No. Uh, yeah. No, I'm with you. And we'll put all of Johnny and Mantra's details in our description um, so that people can reach you there as well. But thank you ever so much for being part of this. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been great. I love having conversations like this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's an honour and a privilege. Thank you. No. Thanks. So if anybody would like to watch any of our other videos, uh, go through to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll get notified when our next video goes live and we will see you next time.